There we go. Hi. Hi. We are now live and we have viewers and everything. Hello. <laughs> so, uh, what's your name? My name's George. Hi, George. So, uh, I, I asked George, I, I, was, I just grabbed him, I was like, hey, you want to do an interview? Uh, so I don't know if you know what the vigil is about or not, so you tell me. I'm, I know it, it has something to do with the camping ban, um, trying to, to get it lifted. I, uh, being in a position where I don't have a place of my own, that's definitely something I can get behind <laughs> at this point. Have you ever been stuck in the rain without being able to have a... Uh, a lean to or anything? Uh, a couple of times, especially in the last couple of months. We got a lot of traffic noise, so I'm going to come closer, and I'm sorry to invade your space, but okay. uh, I do want to hear. So, what was that like? Uh, like what happened? It, what happened? Well, I, you know, I, I've been trying to, to find alcoves or, or places where there are overhangs or awnings, or what have you, and it's 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 rough. And it doesn't always happen, and especially when it's raining, there are a lot of other people looking for for the same kind of same kind of shelter, and so uh, there have been a couple of times where I've ended up just kind of standing under a tree and not sleeping at all that night. So uh, people are able to sleep here without being disturbed by. Uh, Police, uh, they don't come and try to get them to leave. Right. You know, uh, and um, but other than that, that's all we got because it's a sidewalk. Yeah. And we still have this, you know, they call it a structure. If you put a tarp over a chair over you, so that you can have some shedding of the rain. Anything that holds anything. That's why they're trying to define it as a structure, and we are challenging that in court because somebody specifically made a pallet to sleep on got themselves arrested, made them write structure on that sheet of paper so that they could go to court over the word structure and say, come on, I'm just raising myself out of the water here. Hmm. You know, or um, other people have thrown up tarps on just a string to see if they could just challenge that also. The right to have some way of shedding water or, you know, raising your body heat or, or whatever you need to do to survive. Exactly. And the camping ban is a recreational camping law, so that's really sick. <laughs> so, you know, anyway. Um, yeah, so uh, have you ever been uh, run out of a place that you were trying to get sleep? Uh, a couple of times, yeah. Um, uh, the, the police came by and, granted, very politely asked me to, to get up and leave. Um, and not wanting to cause any problems, I did so. Um, Where were you? Uh, over on Yamhill Street. Um, there are a couple of alcoves uh, for, for some of the stores over in that area, um, uh, right where the right near where the Max station is. Okay, so um, doorways are supposed to be a place where you can sleep, but not everyone is equal because some businesses complain and the police chase people out. So it seems like there's overlapping laws which allows selective enforcement, which allows basically the police to do the bidding of the businesses that have the clout to get them to do the work instead of for the folks. So I don't know. Yeah, well, and, and particularly in, in the area where I'm usually at, the, the, the alcove that I was moved away from was for a for-profit business where right next door there was a non-for-profit, a non-profit organization that has an alco and nobody has ever been asked to leave that area. Okay. Alright, so, yeah. Way to go police working for uh, businesses. <laughs> okay. Um, and what about the other time? That uh, was, it was at the same place? Uh, similar situation, same place, yeah. Okay, so you've gone to some kind of shopping areas. Um, kind of, I guess. It's there. This part of town, just about anywhere, could be labeled a, a shopping area. There's a store yeah. of some sort on. Well, just why about why be downtown at all? Why not in other areas? Because, well, I'm good with you being downtown. I'm actually. I'm, I'm curious because uh, 
we're like people could say why are we at city hall why not go you know over somewhere where they will leave us alone the services that that cater towards the homeless individuals are near downtown i i go to to sisters of the road cafe in the mornings for for breakfast um there's a church i go to in the in the evenings that's on the other side of the river but still kind of downtown area mm -hmm. um uh during the day uh i go to the library i'm 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 going online trying to find a job, trying to find some way to, to, to pull myself up out of the situation that I'm in. Right. I'm not just sitting idle and, and doing nothing about it. I'm, I'm Okay, so I hope everyone heard that. <laughs> I'm going to be, uh, I, I can just see this going into the lecture material that I spew out at certain individuals who are in positions of authority and have all these weird ideas of them folks but but that 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 is something I hear over and over is well why can't you be somewhere else why do you have to be here and, and it's like okay there is a reason that people are downtown and and now that I now that you've said that I, I get it you know we're here because we're, we're protesting and we don't want to be moved away from our city hall it's the people's city hall right these are representatives these are employees that work for people not businesses, including also the police who work for people, not businesses. So um, they, they don't remember that. So we are not leaving from here. And I think if a person identifies as living downtown, if this is their home, whether they have a roof over their head or not, then they have a right to be here. So, but that makes a lot of sense. I know people who spend time in the library. It's a, a place where you can be warm, but also, as you said, people are reading and they're using the computer and you're using it to look for work and other things. So. Yeah, um, uh, contacting different social services to, to, to try and find you know, a temporary place to stay. What's your work background? Do you have like a skill set that you're looking for um, work specifically? I, my, my, most of my work is, is actually uh, retail. Um, but, you know, I, and what makes it really hard is that I wasn't actually working before I lost my place to stay. I was a full-time student. Oh, oh boy, I'm seeing my future. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay, so uh, so you, you went to school, and, and what did you come away with there? Um, well, there were some issues with financial aid, and because of the timing of the issues, I wasn't informed of it until it was too late for me to do anything about it and because of that I uh, my roommates couldn't let me stay I ended up not being able to pay for for the tuition for the term I was already taking classes in and were you close to graduating I was about six months away from getting my associate's degree Okay, so this happened to my husband during his bachelor's degree a long time ago, and he got out by the skin of his teeth, but then he was enslaved to student debt for many years. So, um, yeah, this is getting close to home here for me. <laughs> um, all right, so student almost gets through college, six months away, and then boom, no roof over your head. No roof over my head, no no savings because right. you know student loan money is just enough to get by. Right. Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of stories on here about reasonable reasons and unexpected, but then later you think about it and go, oh yeah, I can see how easily that would happen. Over and over, many many different stories. There's not a single story, and I'm really. The, the more I hear, the more angry I get when somebody has the easy answer of, well, they're all this or that, and, and blaming folks for their situation. And in fact, uh, we should be very concerned about, about what you're going through, because this is a, a life-threatening condition to not have a roof over your head. Um, so there's, there's safety issues. You know, yeah. you don't have the protection. That is one thing we offer here because we're together. It's not uh, not perfect. Like, uh, but it's better than being on your own. Yeah, Tim got something stolen right from under me. 
Uh, I went to the bathroom. Mm. That was that. I actually asked somebody to guard, and that was the person who stole it. So that was a bad judgment on my part, and I really feel bad about that. He forgave me, but I thought that these people were with, I thought they were friends, and they thought they were friends. I mean, their friends would have vouched for them, but it, we, they were new to us, so we're a little bit more careful now, and, and so we try to keep a watchful eye. Everybody's responsible for their own things ultimately, but we do have some safety a little bit, yeah. you know. We also have security guards walking around all the time. We have lights on, we have cameras up, we have the police right over there. And since the police are not perpetrators here, <laughs> unlike other other places, you know, that's not a bad thing. But uh, unfortunately, I've heard a lot of really crummy stories about how police are waking people up with their boot, you know, and... and I've, I've been very lucky. The, the two times I've been woken up, they've been very polite, they just, you know, called out to me and said, hey, you should probably move along. So, and I realized that I've, I've been lucky in that. What is that? That's really loud. Um, I'm going to check that out. There's some loud, really loud music. There's a musical yeah, performance of some sort going on. I don't, I don't think that's us. I don't think so. Dan is here. Do you know Dan? The guy who's talking? I thought I was in I'm not sure oh, if I've met Dan yet. Yeah, he's a really awesome guy. Anyway, I don't think that's right. So, uh, boy, that's... I feel sorry for people trying to sleep right now. That's not us, is it? No, I, I saw a bunch of uh, cyclists gathered. Oh my there. god, it's bike swarm! Is that what it is? Okay. Oh! Well, I hope bike swarm doesn't wake everyone up, but I love bike swarm. I mean, maybe that's it. We will see. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, so your story is really wow. I'm, I'm okay. I, I'm still kind of stunned. I'm putting this together. So you go to <laughs> you go to school. Mm -hmm. You're six months away. You have problems with financial aid, but you find out late you're already midterm. You're already taking classes for right. something that you are now realizing you can't pay for, then your roommates have to have you leave uh, to protect themselves. You yep. suddenly don't have a roof. You haven't been working because you've been in school, and you haven't been saving because you've been in school on these loans. Right. Um, and now you're in a situation where you're at a disadvantage because you don't have a roof over your head and all that goes with that, and you um, don't have those job skills necessarily. Uh, but you have the educational background, and you're toward the associates. What was that going to be? I, I was actually planning on transferring to, to the university and, and working towards my master's degree in library arts, become a librarian. Fantastic. So um, I know that Julia Westhouse was helping folks with educational things, but it might be uh, it might be high school. I don't know if they're doing if they're helping folks with college, but there's a business card inside the vigil okay. that uh, it was PDX Outdoorsman, Urban Outdoorsman, who's a cynical fellow. <laughs> He's like, don't ask me for a cigarette. That's like his big cause in life is to tell everybody else not to ask him for a cigarette. And to, you know, but, but in person, he's very nice. I, I'm not going to go to his blog again. But he did tell me uh, Julia Westhouse was a, a good resource for that. Okay. And they also hold mail longer than, um, say, like a mission or wherever. So you can get an address there, and not everybody knows that address. Okay. So, you, you know, people have to use these folk, uh, as addresses, and then it's kind of like having a P.O. box, just forget about it. You know, it, it doesn't work on a resume because those addresses are known. Um, so uh, just like as if you were going to use the – like people can use the U – I can't remember. There were a mailbox store that I could actually use their physical address and put, you know, number whatever, like it was an apartment. Mm. And uh, but they all know 
all those addresses. So same thing here. So Julia Westhouse might be a good resource for that. Like if it, if it is and you follow up with that, then let us know. Absolutely. Because yeah. I'd love to see it if you could get back in, you know, finish up your associates, you know, and and uh, also get out of this situation. It seems like the longer people are in this situation, the harder it becomes because you're you're constantly losing something. Yeah. Yeah. So have you have you had any just crappy things that have just kept happening, like annoying? stuff just falling away like losing stuff or not not really no I've, I've but I've again I've, I haven't really been out here that long either so I, it okay. might just be that I've, I've been lucky so far right so definitely want to see you uh, bounce back quick um, you know I have dear friends who are only recently and hopefully quickly out of this situation so, but anyway, um, I'm glad that you're with us, and it was really nice to meet you, and I'm glad that you told this story to go with our others. And when you're at the library, now, do you use a headset so you can, can you watch, like, whatever you yes. want there? Yes, yeah. Okay, this is Vigil TV with a dash in between okay. on Ustream. Okay. And tell me your name again, I'm sorry. George. George. Okay, so it'll say interview with George. Okay. And it'll be at the top. So watch that, but watch, you know, the other folks, too, because right. they're... Just so many different stories. Anyway, thanks for thanks for sharing with us. Thanks, thanks for talking to me. And I'm going off and going back on. <laughs>